Hello, welcome to Money Tips. This is Charles Kelly. Hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, it's uh, Saturday the 18th of March, the day after St. Patrick's Day here in the UK, a lovely sunny March day. Well, I wanted to run through what's happening, been happening in the week here in, in the UK and, and around the world, across in, in America as well. Uh, this week, of course, we had the budget, which is the Chancellor of the Exchequer, like the guy who's running the treasury, the money, the purse strings of the country. He sets out his budget for the year and they went through that. But I also want to talk about the American banking crisis as well, which could lead to a contagion of uh, banks going under. Uh, they've managed to plug a, a, a something in the, in a, you know, put a little plug in the hole, the leaking hole at the moment, but I don't think it's completely over. So we're going on to the budget first of all. <clears throat> this is the UK budget. And as, as really expected, Jeremy Hunt didn't do anything really exciting. You know, we know that he hasn't got much money to play with. Normally, towards the end of a, a government's period and the elections coming up the next year, then they give away lots of money. They say, oh, we'll cut taxes, we'll give this, we'll give that. You know, it's, it's really about robbing Peter to pay Paul. I don't know if you know that old saying, where they're just taking a bit of money from here, <coughs> excuse me, and they're putting it over there. So they might tax this sector over here a little bit more and give it out to somebody over here, maybe in the form of a tax cut. Uh, or, or whatever um, but we, they've only got a finite amount of money to play with and unless they have a big windfall of tax or profits in, in a year normally they've only got a finite um, amount of money to play with and of course you know when you think about it uh, the, the, the amount of money that the government has to spend to run the country every year is not really covered by taxes this is why they're borrowing billions and billions all the time they, they're the borrowing of the government now is, is over 94% GDP. Uh, so that's that's like, you know, it's like having a credit card maxed out to, to your salary, you know, and, and you, you, you keep having to take out new credit cards to cover the old ones. It, it's, it's not a good situation for the country to be in. But of course, the country can keep printing money. They can create money out of thin air like they've done over the last 10 years. Um, and... So, so, so people are, banks are happy to lend to them and people are happy to lend to them. When I say people lend to them, you lend to them in the form of uh, government bonds. They issue bonds and people give them that money. That's lending the money to them. Uh, in fact, when you put your money in the bank account, you're really lending that money to them and they can do with, the, with that money as they, they want. They can do anything they like with that money. Um, so the budget didn't do much, uh, but I'll, I'll go through some of the budget. Uh, uh, details but of course the country is still recovering from the events of the last few years which you don't mention all the trillions and billions that all the government spent so that it's it's not likely that they would have much money to spend at, at this time and before I go on if you do like this content please like share subscribe if you can send it out there to the world um, it'd, be, it'd be great for, for more people to see it uh, so please, please do that if you can and if you are interested in learning more about managing your money and more about how to look after your money because that is the foundation of wealth building is to learn how to manage and control your money um, i am running a webinar this weekend this this wednesday i mean at 8 p.m uh which will be on a on a, li on a live zoom call webinar so please join me i'll put a, a link up in the description please join me if you can for that live webinar which will go through the three steps to success money management because i don't believe if, if you haven't got the, to grips with money management, it doesn't matter how much money you make, you'll always end up going back to where you started. That's what I wrote about in this book, actually. Um, yes, money can buy you happiness. I wrote about the stars who'd lost it all. You know, Nicholas Cage, Mike Tyson, uh, lo loads of stars that have, have actually made a load of money, but somehow managed to blow it all. And I'm talking about hundreds of millions in some cases. Um, Robin Williams was reportedly running out of money at the time. Um, he committed suicide. He was trying to sell off farms and ranches and this sort of thing. Because when they make money, they go out and spend it all, don't they? And they, they have great big houses. And then if the money, sort of the income dries up, it can lead them into to problems. And we see that. I, I was a financial advisor. I was dealing with people that I'd formerly seen on TV, on top of the pop, singing, you know, with a band, like this stuff. I think they must be making millions. But, you know, they ended up broke. Some of them ended up with credit problems. Um, you know, bankruptcies, um, behind on their mortgage, all sorts of stuff, marriage problems because of this. Um, one of them told me his, his, his wife was trying to say to him, why doesn't he get a proper job? You know, it, he, he keeps dreaming that he's going to make it again. It's not going to happen, that, that sort of thing. So you've got to learn how to manage your money. And when you're earning money, you've got to learn how to invest it so that you, you put some aside 
for, for the future in, in case the business that you're in or the, 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 the sudden income you stream you're getting dries up in some way. So, so learn how to put some money away for the future. Otherwise you can never really retire or quit the rat race. Okay, so um, Jeremy Hunt did mention in the budget about the banking sector, and I think I think either before or during the budget, he said the UK banks are safe forever, everything's okay. Well, if you remember the last um, mini budget under the Liz Trust government, it turns out that the banks and the the pensions industry were not so safe, were they? We found out that there was there was a bit of a hole in the plan there. You know, they they had to be bailed out by by the Bank of England, but uh, he has highlighted the fact. That, you know the banking sector and we saw in America last week I was talking about the Silicon Valley Bank that, that collapsed um, then it was a signature bank that's collapsed now there's a new bank um, uh, the Fe First Republic Bank which has had a 30 billion dollar lifeline um, which, which is, is, is quite a record amount from the other big banks you know the city banks the Wells Fargo the Bank of America this is to literally bail this bank out because the the reason is they're doing this is because they don't want that bank to collapse. It might be like a domino effect of banks collapsing. It's a little bit complicated as to why these banks are collapsing, but it, 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 it comes to, it, it has a lot to do with the Federal Reserve printing money, the banks uh, buying the bonds from the Federal Reserve, um, and, and the rates for these bonds they're paying have gone up, but the banks have been lending the money out at lower rates. So they've shot themselves in the foot, which is a bit surprising considering these guys are banks and they're supposed to be looking after our money, and yet they can't look after their own money. I say our money, but I've got to repeat again, when you put your money in the bank, people say, oh, it's my money, I want it out. You know, Really, you're lending that money to them in the bank, you're lending that money, and they can do what they like with that money. It becomes their money in, in effect, and they're paying you an interest on the money. Yes, it's safe up to 85,000 in the UK, $250,000 in, in the US because of the deposit protection scheme that is put in place with the government if the banks ever go ever fail. But if you've got more than in the UK, 85,000 in one bank and that bank fails, you'll only get protection up to 85,000 pounds. So it might be a good idea to spread your money around. Um, we also saw this week Credit Suisse. Now we all think the Swiss bankers, Swiss bank have been the, the rock of stability, you know, but, but they are in trouble. They've had to go cap in hand to the central bank the emerg um, for an emergency bank loan of, listen to this, $54 billion. $54 billion they've had to be bailed out from this uh, central bank of Switzerland, which I think it, it in itself had to be bailed out not, not so long ago by the, by the government. Um, and they said to shore up liquidity. I love this term, shore up liquidity. It means they're broke, they've got no money, right? If I go to my bank and say, I need £100,000 to shore up liquidity, they're gonna say, you're broke, aren't you? We're not lending you any money. We only lend money to people who don't need it, you know? Uh, so, so that's what's been happening in the bank. We also heard that the Deutsche Bank of Germany, the mighty German Deutsche Bank, could also be in, in problems. I don't think our banks here are, are necessarily in problem. In fact, the, the HSBC bought out the UK arm of the Silicon Valley Bank uh, last week, which I, I said in my previous podcast. So, uh, but but it's it's enough for the the Chancellor to mention this um, and, and and that sort of thing. Now, the National Resident, the National Landlords and Residential Association said that the, the the budget was a missed opportunity to do something about the the supply of property in the rental sector, uh, the chartered. Surveyors Institute uh, said it was disappointed by the lack of housing ambition in the budget. Of course, we've seen schemes removed, like help to buy, by the government, which has not really helped the housing market and helped first-time buyers get on the ladder. And now with higher interest rates, it's even harder for people to be able to buy their properties uh, because you know they need so much more money. That, and, and, and also that the mortgages that they're paying are so much higher that how can they afford to borrow what they could have bought when the rates were were lower so th there's lots of problems in the housing market a lot of young people feel despair with everything and and they feel that they might as well just spend the money and travel and and you know there's a boom in travel and travel and leisure you know if you go to london to certain places like shoreditch and camden you know people are out partying they're out spending money because maybe some of them feel that it, it's not really worth saving for a property because they're, they're never going to get on that property ladder, which is sad. But I, th I know that properties are coming down month on month. Uh, every, every month of the last five months have come down in price. So things are starting to change. And I believe that we are going to see more 
falls in the prices of properties. I know we're seeing falls in the asking price of properties because I get phone calls and emails every day from estate agents saying we've got this property, it's, it's reduced by £50,000. In fact, there's a property not far from me which has been reduced from 500, no, by, by £500,000, half a million pound reduction. Now you might think, oh, it's a £10 million property. No, it was, it was on for one and a half million, 1.5 million, a little bit high. Uh, I'm a local estate agent. I know it was a bit overpriced, but he got a deal agreed at 1.25. That fell out of bed. He tried to keep selling that at 1.25. Now he's reduced it to a million. That's a huge drop, 50% drop you know, of, of the price in a nice residential area near a station, in a sought after road, actually, in a cul-de-sac. Oh, I live in a cul-de-sac. You know, it's a dead end, really. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's a nice house. It's not the best house on the road, but it's, it's a detached four stroke, five bedroom detached house. And, and it's been dropped by half a million pounds. So I think we're gonna see more of that as people get into problems. In America, we know that um, a, lo a lot of companies, property companies that could be in trouble with, with floating rate, uh, interest payments which means they go up so their their payments have gone up their rents can't go up by the same amount uh, we know a lot of people here are, are on fixed rates but they're coming to the end of those fixed rates 1.8 million people this year will come to the end of a fixed rate mortgage now i was at the landlord show this week where they were talking about this talking about renters reform bills coming in act i mean uh, so a lot of landlords are selling up because they're just fed up with the, with the regulations and of course the higher interest rates are eating into their profits. Um, I wanted to talk just briefly before I go into the budget about France. You know there's riots in France. I've been talking about this for weeks. It's not really covered in the mainstream media but millions of people have been rioting in France over the increase in the pension age uh, from 62 to 64. They see that as theft because they said well, we've been paying into the system all these years and now you're robbing us of two years worth of pension. That could be for some people like 30 40,000 pounds. I don't know what the pension is in France, but it's more generous than here. Of course, in the UK, we've seen pension age increase for women from 60 to 65, then now it's 66, then 67, soon to be 68. For men, it's been 65, now 67. For so, depending on the age, they taper these things in. Um, and, and there's been no riots here, people are just Oh, I don't know what's happening. Oh, what's, what's going on? Where's my pension? No, you've got to wait until you're 66. You've got to wait until you're 65. Yeah, you know, so women here have been robbed of up to seven years pension, which that could be 70, 80,000 pounds. But the truth is the governments can't really afford it. There's no fund with your name on it. They've just spent the money that you've given them in your, through your taxes, blown all that. And, and now they're taking the money from new people coming into the scheme, new taxpayers, and paying out people who are on pensions. Uh, it's called, in the private sector, it's called a Ponzi scheme, right? Like Bernie Madoff, he used to do that. He, he paid people interest on their, their investment through new money coming in. There wasn't any interest. And he spent the rest on boats and stuff, and you know, a bit like the governments do, blow money. And he had a good time. Now he's in jail. No one's in jail from the government for, 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 the, for doing this. But it is, it is, in effect, a pensions Ponzi scheme. Now, the Chancellor has announced, that, I mean, there's, there's limited opportunity for what, what the, the, Res the Landlords Association is saying is they want more opportunity for property. But there is some opportunity here. And that's the Chancellor has announced two investment zones across the UK where it would be good to invest around those areas. Uh, you'd have to look them up to see what they are, where they are. There's also new visas for construction industry to help with this, the shortages of builders, people in, in that, that industry, because there is a shortage of you know, qualified builders. It's hard to get any work done right now. Um, so look, with, the, with regards to the, the budget, a lot of this was agreed at the last mini budget. So some of it is confirming what was agreed previously, but most of us will be paying more tax through what's called fiscal drag. Now, it's not a drag addict, it's not Jeremy Hunt in drag. Um, this is where the, the thresholds on which you start paying tax have been sort of frozen for the last couple of years. They're not going up with inflation. So more and more people are going into tax or are hitting higher tax rates, uh, you know, from the, the 23 to, to the 40 percent. They're going into the 40 percent of tax rates. So that's called fiscal drag. So more and more people are going to find themselves paying higher rates of tax um, because they're their, their income is going up, but the, the, the thresholds are not going up. Um, the thresholds mean that there's a certain amount on which you don't have to pay tax. So it starts off at around 
at just over £12,500 in the UK. So a lot of people are not paying any tax at all. A lot of lower paid workers, people in Starbucks and places like that, or maybe part-time workers, are not paying any tax whatsoever. So when you hear people say, oh, I'm paying all this tax, well, how much tax are you paying? Maybe you're not paying as much as you think. Um, so that, that's one thing. We're all going to be paying a little bit more tax. Uh, what one survey said we're all going to be 6% worse off in, in the coming year due to inflation, due to wages not keeping up with inflation. I think a lot of people are, are more than 6% worse off with, with the rising cost of everything. Energy, I'll just run through some of the main points. Energy cap limiting typical household bills uh, to 2,500 is extended for another three months to June. Uh, so um, that, that's good news that we're, we're not we're not going to see a sudden hike in energy prices, but the wholesale price of energy has come down. So I would hope to see a reduction in energy prices. Now, a lot of people might think, well, two and a half thousand, well, my energy firm has increased my direct debit by more than, you know, from that, that figure, you know, two and a half thousand a, a year. So some people have, have had their direct debits hiked up to three, four hundred pounds per month, which is more than two and a half thousand a year. And you know, that's equivalent to what, <clears throat> you know, a couple of hundred pounds a month. But some people are paying more than that. Now, the energy companies are saying, well, your usage is higher, so we're, we're going to charge you this. But I, I called up my energy company on one of my properties where I pay all the bills, at HMO. And I said, well, I, I, I don't want to pay £450 a month. Uh, my rents have not gone up by that much. And I said, I want the, the payments reduced. And they said, well, you know that will cause a more of a debit on your account. I said, yeah, OK, debit is fine. That means I'll owe the, owe the energy company more at the end of the year. But am I paying interest on that? No, it's interest free money for me. So I said, well, reduce it. And they, they just reduce it at a stroke. I can't remember the exact figure. It was like 400 and something pounds a month down to 250 pounds a month. So I'm happy with that. It's, it's helped my cash flow the, and the debit will be paid off from future uh, direct debits as bills, as the real cost comes down, because I'm not on a fixed rate tariff on that, that deal. So that's one way of saving money. It's not saving money in terms of putting it in the bank, but I, I'm, I'm getting an interest free loan from EDF. Thank you, uh, EDF. Uh, there's all, they're also doing something to, to equalize the, the, the amount that people pay on prepayment meters, which is a rip off. They pay more for their, they're the poorest in society. They pay more for their electricity because they're on a, a card meter. So they're going to do something about that. The big thing in pensions, if you're a big earner, uh, the lifetime allowance for pensions has been increased, so you can put more than a million pounds in your overall pension fund. They've also increased the amount you can put in the tax-free year, yearly allowance. That's the amount you get tax-free on your pensions from forty to sixty thousand pounds. But that kind of only benefits people who've, who've got a lot of money, I guess. Um, it doesn't benefit people who can barely afford to to fund their pension. And we know <clears throat> that we're facing a pensions time bomb, a crisis, because people are you know, grossly underfunding their pension schemes mainly because they probably can't afford the cost of living and can't put, put enough into their pension. But you should put you know, a good amount into your pension scheme every month for the long term. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat today. And this is what I talk about in my, my uh, webinar, <clears throat> how you can save money for the future. Save a little bit for short term, save a little bit for long term, uh, save a little bit to, to pay off uh, debts like credit cards. <clears throat> but I'll be talking about that on my webinar next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Um, they talk about debts and, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> Corporation tax uh, has been increased. This is under some sort of growth act, I think, a growth plan. Increasing corporation tax from 19 to 25%. How does that increase growth of the economy? How does that encourage companies to come here and invest here? How does that encourage companies to stay here when you can go across the water to Ireland and pay half of 25% in corporation tax? <clears throat> How does that encourage young entrepreneur entrepreneurs to, to stay here when they can go to, say, tax-free Dubai or many other European countries and pay less tax when they're doing their startup business and maybe still run things remotely. And you, you're, you're pushing away the brightest and the best. They've also messed around with the allowances on <clears throat> investing in new startup companies as well, but I won't go into detail about that. Um, so they have increased capital allowances, um, tax breaks for the, the investment zones. Um, <clears throat> 200 million a year this year to help fill potholes. If you, if you notice what it's like driving around the UK at the moment, it's like driving in, in the developing world or the third world. It's like big holes. You, you're going like this all the time. You're driving down this and you see a big hole. And this is on main roads. This is not on country roads that are hardly made up. This is on main roads. It's very dangerous driving around 
at the moment. So that's good news. Um, look, there's lots of other stuff, uh, new employment stuff to help disabled people get back into employment. They're hoping that uh, people will, for, who are retired will come back into employment. Uh, they've also announced something for uh, uh, childcare, free childcare, but it doesn't come until I think 2025. Uh, so there's a lot of you know headlines but you've got to look at the detail to see that there's there's not much there to write home about um you know 60 million they're giving away to over 50s to go back into work and skills training uh, they did say that they're spending i think more 11 more 11 billion pounds more on defense <clears throat> i think we kind of know why that is right defense wars building up of tension they've all seemed to have enough money to spend on defense and send you know missiles to you know the eastern europe to ukraine they all seem to have enough money to do that um but when it comes to smaller things they cut back and cut back okay i wanted to mention one other thing another little savings tip i can give you a quick savings tip really if you like um, <clears throat> now we know that in the bank you don't get very much money for your money right if you put your money in the bank you get two three percent maybe some people are getting less than one percent but there is a way you can save money if you buy stamps. Now, if you're a company that sends out a lot of post, um, that you know you spend hundreds of pounds a month on post, you should remember that stamps are going up. The, the, the price of a first class stamp is going up in, on the 3rd of April and will increase by 15p to 110. Uh, that's, you call that a 15% increase, right? Now, if you pre-buy these stamps, you can use them for the rest of the year and you'll save yourself 15%. Where can you earn 15% on your money? Even the second class stamps going up from 7p by 7p to 75p. So that's almost a 10% increase. So that's the way you can make 10 or 15% on your money. Um, I, I did this years ago when we sent out a lot of posts. I, I used to do this when stamps were going up. And one, at one point, they went up by 30%. And I bought enough stamps for two years. In fact, I was using them for like, I think, for four or five years. Um, and we used to have a franking machine but i just bought the stamps from from the, the 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 post office and you can do the same thing so that's just little tips you can do uh sometimes it's in an, in an inflationary age it's it's actually better to to invest in the commodity the stuff that you, you know you're going to need for the rest of the year because you know it's going to go up by 10 percent in in the next year um it could be cans of beans it could be toilet rolls it could be prepaying uh, oil for your oil fired heaters it, it could be buying wood for your uh, burner, whatever. But sometimes it, it pays to invest in commodities rather than leaving your money in the bank. And certainly if you've got money in the bank, you should be paying off uh, high interest deb debit, debit uh, credit, I mean, uh, credit cards and that sort of thing. Um, so last thing before I go, remember that we're living in turbulent times. There's lots of things to consider. Money management is very important to learn how to manage your money. And next Wednesday, I'll have a uh, a special webinar i want to show you how you can not only survive but thrive in a recession oh i wanted to mention one more thing the obr the office for budget Res responsibility that they were the ones that are, are, are riding high at the moment because they managed to get rid of liz trust government last year and, and quasi quarting because they didn't consult them first but i'll put up a graph in on on the recording of this uh where i'll show you that their, their bu budget their forecasts are all over the place they, if you look at the interest rate that they were predicting last year to what they're predicting it to go to now, it, it's, it's about 2% difference. Um, so I wouldn't listen to too much for them. But they, they said that uh, inflation will go down to, to just over 2% in the next year. It's, it's around about 10% at the moment. In, in this year, it will go down to 2.9%. To I don't think so. I, I can't see how that's going to happen unless they really shoot interest rates up to you know 10 or 15 percent then of course inflation will come down but i don't think we can bring inflation down to 2.9 percent in this year when it we know it's really more than 10 percent now anyway it's probably more like 15 to 20 percent and i noticed also this year this week that they're, they're starting to fiddle with the things they they use to uh to to calculate inflation they've started to change the, the shopping basket of inflation linked items so, so maybe that's how they're going to do it. Maybe they're going to fiddle the inflation rate to make it look lower than it is. But we know that the basic things we buy in the shop are, are going up by more than 10 percent or have gone up more by more than 10 percent in the, in the last year and are still going up. They're still reducing the package sizes and increasing the, the inflation rate and increasing the price. I mean, so, so basically, I just want to end on next week. I'm running a free webinar 
to help you not only survive in this economy, but, but thrive in this economy, to get control of your finances immediately, and then start building real wealth uh, through saving and investing. It's not a get rich quick scheme, but you must learn about money. You must be educated in, in money and finance to build your wealth because what you're seeing, what the government are telling you is not really right. <clears throat> There's a lot of things going on here and, and you've got to, to learn about money to get to grips with your money. So 8 p.m. next Wednesday, and I'll, I'll show you more about how to manage your money because that's the, the foundation for building anything is learning how to control your money, right? If you're earning lots of money, but it's going through your fingers, you'll never have much of it. So I want to show you, it's a free webinar next Wednesday. Click on the link that I'll put up in the description and I, I will see you, see you there. So that's all for now. Remember that the budget that the government announced is one thing, but you've got to control your own budget. You've got to have your own budget because that is more important than what's going on in the, the wider economy out there. So thanks very much for listening and I will see you on the next episode of Money Tips. This is Charles Kelly. Thanks very much.